As we've been talking about, President Trump's speech at the Conservative Political Action Conference today was vintage candidate Trump. He outlined the same agenda. He campaigned on hitting many of the same core issues, including this one. By stopping the flow of illegal immigration, we will save countless tax dollars. And, and that's so important because the tax, the dollars that we're losing, are beyond anything that you can imagine. And the tax dollars that can be used to rebuild struggling American communities, including our inner cities. We are also going to save countless American lives. Back now with the, the panel. Uh, Carl Bernstein, does it, you know, we were talking about before the break about how this is Donald Trump's party, how this was Donald Trump's event. I mean, does it surprise you the extent to which how much the Republican Party has embraced this sort of economic nationalism? Well, I think two things are happening. The base of his victory have embraced it, and we're watching at CPAC a narcissistic demagogue even going farther uh, with his message of anger and with his message of exclusion. While on Capitol Hill what is happening, he is scaring the hell out of a lot of movement conservatives and a lot of senators and congressmen who worry about his stability and are well aware that he is presenting all of this in a fact-free universe. Uh, there's great concern on Capitol Hill. I'm sure that, that others on this broadcast uh, can, can attest to that. And so we're heading in two different directions where there is some real skepticism in his own party in Washington about his, uh, the, his approach and whether he really is a president who knows what he's doing, while at the same time he's energizing those who brung him to the dance. Uh, Congress but it's, it's a really ugly mood as well. Congressman Kingston, I mean, what about that? And, and folks well, talk to I, you I, I just Because there are a lot of sort of mainstream Republicans who did not go to CPAC, who are in leadership positions, who weren't there this time. Well, a lot of mainstream Republicans never have gone to CPAC. In fact, CPAC originally really was more of a purist kind of love fest at, for conser the most conservative members of Congress. But, um, you know, I, I have to say to our friend Carl, a narcissistic demagogue, that's what base Republicans call uh, Barack Obama. I think that's partisan rhetoric. I don't think it's accurate at all. This is a guy taking a victory lap. And he checked off, all, as you pointed out, checked off all the issues from immigration to the military to the uh, evangelical community. He singled out the director of the NRA, for example. These were all base Republican type issues. Is there concern? Do you hear concern from folks on Capitol Hill who are Republicans who may be worried about where the party is going? No, I don't. At this point, they're happy that things are finally moving, that the gridlock is going to be broken. Um, I, I'd say there's more uh, worry about renegade Republicans who are worried about their own political uh, leveraging. And, and, and I knew, you know, I learned that many years ago when Newt Gingrich was the speaker as a Georgian. Anytime I wanted to make the press, I could just say something bad about Newt. Republicans can always speak, and Democrats too, can always speak your own party leadership and you become the darling of the day but um, it doesn't help move the train forward what they have to do is stick together and they've got to deliver on the promises collectively from health care to immigration security to um, ISIS. But Steve, Bannon, yeah. Steve Bannon and Reince Priebus both said that there have been people who come into the president's office and say you have to moderate on X Y or Z promise you made they both said that and he to his credit said I said this I made this promise to the American people I'm going to deliver that promise and he's doing that despite the fact that his policies will be misconstrued as I would argue they just were as excluding people or isolating people or angry uh, he's delivering and I think that's a very good thing we finally have someone who's walking his talk despite pressure I don't know if it's from Republicans or Democrats they were mentioning despite pressure to moderate not only that it's also despite human decency and also compassion I think the the role of a commander-in-chief is also to take into consideration things that you may not have known while you were campaigning there's nothing wrong with moderating and or compromising that is the, of course the purpose of the the House and the Senate. Um, and I, I, I don't know which Republicans you're talking to. Maybe you talked to too many folks that went to CPAC, Congressman Kingston. <laughs> but there are several Republicans on the Hill who are also still very concerned. In fact, you got some very vocal ones doing a town hall next yeah, week. John McCain. Yeah. So you, I think that you well, do have quite a few right. who are concerned. We got to We got to take a break. I want to thank everybody coming up. One piece of the mystery solved, but so many remain in the death of Kim Jong Un's half brother. This story is so bizarre.